it's the summer of 2019. I'm 13 years old and I'm excited for one thing this summer. For the first time in nearly eight years, my grandmother is coming to see me. Now, my grandmother is one of my favorite people in the world as she's got this bright pink hat and this huge smile. And I remember that on my birthday, she biked all the way across town to buy me a birthday cake. So we're from Stanford here. We know it's not easy to bike around campus with a birthday cake. Naturally, I'm super excited to see my grandmother this summer. Except until we get a phone call. So it's a few weeks before the trip and my grandmother calls to tell us that she seems to have gotten a small cut on her leg that seems to have gotten infected. We don't really think too much of it since we expect the doctors to be able to treat it with just a few antibiotics, right? Except that's not what happens at all. We get more and more phone calls about how my grandmother's infection isn't progressing as expected. And then all of a sudden, we get the news that we never expect. My grandmother is dead. And that was the first time I learned about antibiotic resistance. So how many of you have taken an antibiotic before? Raise your hand. Well, chances are, even if you didn't raise your hand, you've probably used an antimicrobial at some point in your life since antibiotics can include pills like penicillin or ointments like Neosporin and even an antibacterial soap. And from treating simple infections to making surgery and chemotherapy possible, it's no wonder that antibiotics were once known as the miracle drug. But today, there is a huge threat standing in our way in our usage of antibiotics today and it's a threat that was warned about in Alexander Fleming's Nobel lecture after his discovery of penicillin in 1928. And it's called antibiotic resistance. And here's what it is. So when you get an infection, your doctor will often prescribe you with an antibiotic. But just like humans, bacteria are not all exactly the same. And some might be more resistant to antibiotics than others. So when you misuse an antibiotic, this selects for the bacteria that are more resistant to antibiotics. And over time, you start selecting for more and more resistant strains of bacteria. And boom, that's how you end up with antibiotic resistance. But the threat of antibiotics isn't just limited to antibiotic resistance. In fact, Antibiotics themselves can actually have hugely detrimental effects to your body's own natural gut microbiome, making it harmful to overuse antibiotics in more ways than just one. And in fact, today, we're starting to see antibiotic resistance emerge to become one of the greatest global health threats in the world, as it's emerging to become one of the top killers in the world, killing more than 10 million people per year by the year 2050. So, when I first learned about this issue, I was shocked and horrified. What kind of drug is this, where such simple misuse can lead to such devastating consequences? Not just for you, but for everyone around you. And even worse, most people aren't aware of the dangers of antibiotic resistance, as we see antibiotic misuse all the time, from saving antibiotics to not taking the antibiotic as prescribed. In fact, antibiotics are one of the only drugs where how you take it can affect how others can take it. So how you take your cholesterol medication doesn't really affect how anyone else can take it, but if you misuse an antibiotic, this will change whether or not this antibiotic is effective for the person next to you. So this was what first inspired my interest in learning more about antibiotic resistance, where I started reading more into the papers and literature to understand this topic. And unfortunately, I have even more bad news for you. Today, antibiotic development has largely come to a standstill. In fact, since the 1980s, there have been no new major classes of antibiotics that have been developed, and nearly 78% of pharmaceutical companies 
have scaled back on antibiotic development since the 1990s. So if we're expecting doctors and scientists to be the one to fix this issue for us, perhaps it's not that easy. So what can we actually do about this? Well, when I first learned about antibiotic resistance, I felt powerless. As a high school student at that time, I couldn't be the one to develop the next new antibiotic, make policy changes to change the way people use their antibiotics, or even to see my grandmother for the last time before she died. But I saw an opportunity when I saw an ad for a student-led arts project, and I came up with the idea to create a documentary on antibiotic resistance just to learn a bit more about this issue. I didn't start this project thinking that I wanted to change the world, but I thought it would be a worthwhile experience as long as I created something that was personally meaningful to me. So that's how it began. It started with a couple scribbles and a storyboard on the back of my math homework that gradually grew into the opportunity to interview patients and professionals and pharmacists from my community who had been personally impacted by this cause. And through this project that started out as an initial just personal interest in antibiotic resistance, it then grew into the movement to inspire others to take action in the antibiotic resistance crisis. With my documentary as my catalyst, I got the opportunity to screen it at film festivals, schools, and community centers worldwide to begin to spark the conversation about antibiotic resistance. And it even brings me here today, where I'm sharing with you about the issue of antibiotic resistance. But perhaps one of the most transformative moments came for me when my documentary was selected to screen at, by the World Health Organization at their film festival, which had shown me how far my work had come and being able to be selected out of thousands of professional filmmakers and organizations in amplifying voices from unexpected places. And in fact, with my documentary, I've been able to take this conversation about antibiotic re resistance to places like New York and Australia and China, which has really helped me see the impact of being able to talk about this issue with the public. But throughout this journey, I have been incredibly inspired by the community of passionate people working on this cause. I've been inspired by the medical professionals and the pharmacists and the doctors who have worked tirelessly to implement antibiotic stewardship programs into their hospitals. I've also been inspired by the patients who have been personally impacted by this cause and inspired to speak up about this cause. But I also learned that there is a huge missing gap in the way that we're addressing the antibiotic resistance crisis. And it's us, the public. So antibiotic resistance is a cause that's a lot like COVID-19. It's a public health emergency. And as we've seen from COVID-19, it's not an issue that can simply be solved by the actions of doctors and scientists alone. And instead, it requires the active participation of everyone in the public to step up and take action. So as we're seeing the rise of antibiotic resistance today like a flood, it's important for us to begin taking action. And for antibiotic resistance, that involves being responsible with your antibiotics. So what does it actually mean to be responsible? So number one, understand proper antibiotic usage. So understand that antibiotics are only effective for bacterial infections and they are completely ineffective for any non-bacterial infections such as the flu. So if you have a disease like the flu that doesn't require antibiotics, don't pressure your doctor for antibiotics. In addition, it's also very important to make sure that you take your antibiotics as prescribed, as if you save your antibiotics or if you take less or more of the prescription than you were prescribed, this runs the risk that not all of the bacteria will be killed off, and that leads to antibiotic resistance. And number two, take action to, pre to prevent getting an infection in the first place. So that can include actions like washing your hands, getting vaccinated, or even cooking your food properly. And 
This can be a bigger deal than you might expect, since over 160,000 tons of antibiotics are used in our food and agriculture every year, and that makes up around 80% of all antibiotic usage. So it's incredibly important for us to make smart decisions with our food and agriculture to prevent getting infections from our food and animals. And number three, if you just heard that statistic and thought 160,000 tons of antibiotics, how is that even allowed? Well, this might be the point for you. You can get involved by taking action in public policy and government, where you can support the legislation that support antibiotic stewardship programs and promoting proper antibiotic usage. And you can help support the public officials who care about this issue. And you can also get involved by supporting the funding for public health research and antibiotic development so we have more solutions for the future. So through getting involved in public policy and government, you can help take action as well. So these might seem like small actions, but they can actually have huge impacts on the grand scheme of the antibiotic resistance crisis. No matter if you're a parent, a student, an educator, or someone working in public policy, you have a role to play in stopping the antibiotic resistance crisis. And for me, I feel like I've been able to change my story with antibiotic resistance. Today, I don't see this as the devastating issue that stole my grandmother away from me anymore. Instead, I've been incredibly inspired by my journey to see that the actions that I make can have a huge impact as well. And it has inspired me to continue to make a difference for others in the future. Even though I never got to spend that one last summer with my grandmother, I'm incredibly inspired by her legacy and I hope that she can see the lifelong impact that her legacy has made on me and inspiring my goals for the future to continue to work on this in making a difference in antibiotic resistance. So in the end, it can feel incredibly easy to feel powerless against such a huge issue. But at the same time, our actions can be incredibly powerful as well as the choices that we make can have huge ripple effects on one of the largest emerging global health threats in the world. And this time, I know that we have the power to change the outcome. So let's do it. Thank you.